But the Astros seem to get a lot of crap. It's during a lockout, and they're just trying to get some flow through a social media. And they put out this, hey, you got $15 to choose your all Astros team. And um, it's all like great, fine and dandy. Then you look closer and you're like, hmm, where are all the current Astros? We'll talk about that and more on this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisman. Find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Instagram and Twitter. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. And guys, thank you for making the Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, keep on subscribing, keep on liking us. And whether you're on the way to work, on your way home from work, and just listening to that work, uh, keep on listening to the audio version on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you're listening to your podcast, keep on listening to the Locked on Astros podcast. We appreciate it. So, um... I do want to address this and I don't want to spend a lot of time in this and we can talk about who our players are, but yeah. um, the Astros have done this from time to time. You have $15 to pick your all time Astros list. And normally the Astros current players are on here and the Astros and people across baseball are kind of giving the Astros a lot of crap for this. Why would you do this in the middle of a lockout? You can't use any of the current Astros players because they are, locked out so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and give you the list of the current player the players on here so for five dollars you can have nolan ryan billy wagner craig biggio jeff bagel jose cruz for four dollars you can have mike scott jr richard roger clemens uh, um, lance berkman or Sudeño. for three dollars you can have roy oswalt larry durker jimmy Wynn, bob watson or um, joe morgan for two dollars, you can have Andy Pettit, Joe Morgan, Ken uh, Ken Manetti, J um, Jeff Kent, and Shane Reynolds. You mean Joe Negro? You said Joe you Negro. Said, yeah. What did I say? You said you said Joe Morgan again. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, for a dollar, you can have uh, Michael Bourne, Evan Gaddis, um, Doran. What's Bill his name? Doran? Bill, Bill Doran. Doran. That's Chris a little bit Burke, my time. Yeah. And then, Chris Burke uh, and Wandy Rodriguez. Oh, well, Andy Rodriguez, that, dang, that goes way back. Um, anyway, so a lot of people are like, where's Carlos Correa? Is he not an all-time Astro? What about Jose Altuve? Isn't what? he up there with the war? What about Alex Bregman? What about these guys? What about Lance McCullers? Well, you know, I think, too, um, I do think that when you put all-time Astros, to me, the term all-time means – players that that have played before like players that have established career and they're retired I'm just, I'm just telling you that's that's what comes to mind when I see this with 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 the all-time Astros so obviously I knew what was going on um, there's a lockout and so that's why the current players aren't on there and I know there were some people kind of him and hawing about where players were ranked Ken Caminetti only worth two dollars Jeff Kent only worth two dollars um, there's a lot of people that wanted Wandy Rodriguez, but you know, on this list, you've got guys like J.R. Richard, you've got Nolan Ryan, you've got Mike Scott, um, Roger Clemens. I mean, this is a powerful lineup pitching wise. Durker, who a lot of people don't know about that in, that is kind of the newer generation. You may know his name, but you don't know much about him. Um, Roy Oswalt, um, just great success on the mound. Um, one of the Negro brothers, you know, just, just, I mean, the pitching is really the strongest part of this. Hey, um, of this hey maybe what? this is a way to educate the newer generation of names of Astros players they may not know. Yeah, or maybe it's just the <laughs> lockout. <laughs> I like how yeah. you're, Eric's taking the always positive, always Stroh's 
Um, I like that. You are doing great. And so, um, of course, you know, you had your trolls on there where they said, hey, y'all forgot somebody. And they put the icon of a trash can, which, no, they um, the trash can only had like one season. So they couldn't be considered an all-time Astro. Um, but, you know, Wandy Rodriguez, um, someone put on here Magic Wandy, you know, for – a couple seasons there, Juan Rodriguez was a was a, was a really really good starting pitcher, Eric, and um, it was just one of those things where um, you look at this. I, I remember some of these guys from growing up. You know, I remember going to the dome and watching Jose Cruz. I remember going to the dome and watching Mike Scott. Um, I remember growing up. You know, Alan Ashby's not on here. Um, I was kind of surprised. To me, he was my favorite catcher growing up. You know, Jimmy Wayne never never saw him play, but I remember seeing the orange seat where he had hit the one of the one of the 10 upper deck home runs before the 11th which was hit by Mark McGuire in 1998 and you know Jeff Kent Jeff Kent does you know I kind of wish Jeff Kent would have been here longer Eric he he was a big part of those of those um you know those early 2000 playoff if teams if he wasn't washing his car too hard maybe he would have been here longer <laughs> well, or riding true. his motorcycle too hard oh did he get in a motorcycle wreck uh, I mean, I don't know. That's just mm. rumor. Okay, okay. Well, you know, I don't know. And then, you know, Ken Caminetti, you know, having the rise and the fall of Ken Caminetti, we, we actually had a guy on here who talked about that some time ago. But what an amazing athlete. Probably, I think, the best third baseman to touch the diamond since Brooks Robinson, um, just hands down. And Glenn Davis isn't on yeah, here. That's, that's, a, there's that's a great There's many pick. names that are not on here. And, and you know – I mean, look, Adam Everett, deal. where's Adam Everett? Come on guys. Yeah. Adam Everett. I mean, you, you've got other infielders. Adam Everett was actually a very good fielding short. What about Tim Redding? Come on, man. No, Tim Redding was awesome. Tim Redding. No. Okay. I know you're really missing Kirk Sarlos though. I know you're yes. really missing that guy. He was, he was the Dutch <laughs> Greg Maddox. Come on. <laughs> The Dutch Craig Maddox. I have never heard anybody refer to him as that except to you. That is great. Um, so, Eric, so tell me, out of this $5 pack, Nolan Ryan, um, Billy Wagner, who should be in the Hall of Fame, Craig Biggio, Jeff Bagwell, Jose Cruz, who are you taking out of that $5 pack? I mean, I got to go with the guy that got me into – I mean, I was always a Astros fan, but I've got to go with the guy that was, made me a hardcore Astros fan, and that's the guy – that's behind me right here. And that's Jeff Bagwell. I, he, okay. He's the guy that made me a hardcore Astros fan just with his stance, his grit on the field. And I got to go with Bagwell. So I'm going to use $5 of my bucks right there. And I'm probably going to go with um, with his buddy there, Biggio. And I'm going to use most of my bucks right oh, there. Oh, wow. You're going to use 10 bucks right off the bat. Yeah. So so my only $5 pitcher on or player was Jeff Bagwell. Um, and I just, I, I, I picked him. I, I really liked him for what he offered when he was at the height of his career, especially, um, it's a shame that the 1994 season ended in a strike because, uh, you know, he got the MVP. I think he would have been MVP in a full season, but I only picked one $5 player. And in this, in the, in the $4 players, I had a hard time choosing between Mike Scott and J.R. Richard. Mike Scott, I saw pitch. Mike Scott, I saw just absolutely dominate lineups. But J.R. Richard, for what he did in his short time, for what he did early in his career, the amount of strikeouts he would rack up, the fear that J.R. Richard put in other batters, J.R. Richard was my $4 Astros pick because that guy was – an absolute animal. You're talking about building around somebody. If you could take J.R. Richard and extend his career and make it longer, you talk about a Hall of Fame trek that he was on. Um, you know, Mike Scott. Mike Scott, had he had a few more really, really good years like he had in 86. Easily talking about possible Hall of Fame for Mike Scott. Um, it's interesting that you didn't even mention Roger Clemens. I mean, Roger Clemens has more of a – Hall of Fame pedigree than the other guys. I he mean, does. He does. But those guys played longer with the Astros as well. Okay. So you're looking at purely yeah, a Astros. Yeah, I'm looking at, I mean, you know, yeah, Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit. They, I mean, they weren't with us that long, Eric. They, they were only with us for a few seasons. And that's so why, think, that's when you take away the current players during the lockout. That's where you open this situation. Hey, someone, someone right here. Here's a throwback. Bob Nepper. Yeah. 
Dude, Bob Nepper was Bob Nepper was an underappreciated player, and his baseball card is undervalued. He was a very good pitcher in his time. I really like Bob Nepper. Yeah, uh, it definitely. And guys, if you if you don't have the if you if you're in the lockout and you don't have the TV to watch it, you don't you don't know what the baseball you're missing. So talk about Directv. So, so does this sound familiar? You got a device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbors, best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you, there's a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle, and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports movies and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right. So I know that this is kind of a stretch. Uh, He's still early in his career, but looking at this $4 list, You've got Mike Scott, J.R. Richard, Roger Clemens, compared to Lance McCullers. Which pitcher, which one of those three pitchers would you compare Lance McCullers most to? Uh, this is a blind reaction I'm throwing to Brett Chancy right now. Who would I compare Lance McCullers to between Scott, Richard, and Clemens? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, because those are all three power pitchers. I would more compare him to Roy Oswald. Um, I, I guess Mike Scott, but, you know, because Mike Scott's use of the split finger, um, I wouldn't compare him to Richard or Nolan. I, I don't I don't think I don't think McCullers overpowers you like they did. Mike Scott, his split finger was unbelievable, and it was unhittable. You know, all the Mets said in 1986, had they lost game six, they would have lost game seven because Mike Scott – probably would have shut him out and thrown another no-hitter like he did that year against the Giants to clinch the division with a no-hitter in the Astrodome. So it is just one of those things where I would have to say Mike Scott, but but I, I may be totally off. There may be some some other baseball guru minds, but I think out of those three, J.R. Richard and Roger Clemens is more the power pitcher, the big, tall oak, kind of like Justin Verlander, right? Where Mike Scott was was big and tall, but he relied on the he he relied on that split finger and the way it rose and the movement, and that's what was his um, coup de gras, and that's what Lance's coup de gras is, and he's found the changeup as his sweet spot, and so I say Lance and Mike Scott. Okay, I mean I I, I kind of see some similarities between Clemens and I would say Scott as well, um, so I, I could see some similarities there, so. Uh, g- good comparison there. So uh, definitely in the three dollar range, uh, it, it's really hard to see. I mean, uh, you got Joe Morgan, you, but um, Jimmy Wynn, what he did in his time, especially what he did at the Astrodome. I know it was way before my time, but uh, for what he did at the Astrodome, the to- toy cannon. Uh, but what Roy Oswald did, uh, he did something with that that small frame, and he was just a wizard for a reason, and. You just got to go with that. And I'll probably, with my other uh, $3, I'm at $13 now, but I'll probably go Bagwell, Biggio, then Oswalt. And then I'll probably just get like um, Michael Bourne and um, Doran or something or Burke or something just to kind of round out my roster. But I I just think that Oswalt uh, was kind of unheralded as a Astros pitcher. He was just that dominant pitcher, and you can just rely on him every time that he went out to the mound. So, Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, Oswalt was a a model of consistency and hard work. And, you know, he's the one that pitched us into the world's – into our first World Series. And so he deserves a lot of credit. For me, in that $3 range, because I already had a pitcher in my lineup and J.R. Richard, I didn't want to go with more than one pitcher. I went with Joe Morgan, simply because he was, I think, one of the best second basemen of all time. But that doesn't take anything away from Bob Watson, who was my grandfather's favorite player that I didn't know until I interviewed my dad this last year when we talked about autographs and stuff like that on the show. 
Rose Walt, um, second to none. And I think Larry Durker, a lot of people from our generation um, don't really know a whole lot about him. But if you go back and look at his career, he was a very, very good pitcher. Um, so that's so that's my three dollar range. Eric, in the in the two dollar category, how could I deny Ken Kimonetti? I, 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 I mean, how do you how do you keep now? I know I I'm kind of I'm kind of going against what I said like short career, but w- when Ken Kimonetti got up to the majors here, when he when he played for us, he was a huge part of this team with Bagwell with Biggio, and, and and I I remember seeing the amazing stabs, the throws across the diamond across the astroturf from his knees, getting runners out at first. I mean the absolute athleticism and the ability to just muscle the ball out of the ballpark pre any steroids or HGH that he started taking. But Ken Kimenetti, I think, was one of the most pure, raw, talented infielders and third baseman that we've seen. And, you know, I see Pettit's on there. But again, Pettit had a shorter career. Um, Jeff Kent easily could go into that. And then, you know, they also have Shane Reynolds. I mean, you know, uh, Shane don't Reynolds, discount Shane Reynolds. No, Shane I'm, no, Reynolds was no, I'm not. Hold on. Ace. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually about to give him a compliment. Yeah. yeah no, hold man. You, you got all offended there. No, no. I was he's, literally, he's okay. my guy. He's my guy. Okay. I will, I'm about to go after Alex for chatting for his crap that he's talking. I'm about to go after you. If you're going to talk crap about <laughs> Shane Reynolds. No, so no, no, no. So no, Shane Reynolds, when he was at the height of his career, was very, very good. Um, but at the end of the day, I had to go with Ken Caminetti. And then I, I'm just going to round mine off. <laughs> Man, the the $1, I, I just – I love my – I actually have a Michael Bourne jersey. I couldn't go with Michael Bourne. Bill Dorn was my favorite second baseman growing up. Chris Burke, I was there when he hit the home run against the Braves. Wandy Rodriguez, I, I was never that big on Wandy like everybody else was. I went with the caveman himself. Evan the Bulldog Gaddis because dude, come on, man. The Bulldog, how can you how can you bet against a guy with like double digit triples and he's a freaking catcher? The dude is a man child and he was an absolute animal in that 2017 season. I think I think a bigger part than a lot of people like to give credit to in that championship run. So the Bulldog, Evan Gaddis, rounds out my fifteen dollar team. Okay. All I have to say, Alex, is were you sucking your thumb? When uh, Shane Reynolds was pitching, booyah, and moving on. <laughs> Just kidding, Alex. <laughs> wow, we're we're getting smack talking. <laughs> this is like um, gloves off. This is like UFC 216. I don't know if y'all saw that. Yeah, for those Did y'all that don't that know upset? what's going on, oh like um, like uh, he's like talking all the smack towards me. I mean, Alex and I are cool, so it's fine. Uh, so fine. Alex is Alex is basically blaming Eric for Carlos Correa not coming back to Houston because he <laughs> says Eric doesn't want him. Um, and then, you know, Eric is, Eric is firing back. So if you're listening via, via audio, um, we have a running thread of, of chat going on and see, here's the thing. If you're missing out on that, you need to go subscribe to YouTube. You need to check us out on YouTube. When we go live, it's really fun. Sometimes we premiere episodes. Other times we record. It's still great to watch. You get to see us. You get to see our smiling, awesome faces. And all the while we're watching Luis Garcia become the pitcher of a generation. That's right. Yeah. All righty. So can we move on from this? And so Let's I know go. since we're talking about Carlos Correa, we might as well go ahead and talk about this next subject. Um, so you wanted to address Carlos Correa. What are we talking about now, Brett? What are we talking about now? We're t- <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to talk about Carlos Correa. What was it? Oh, I just wanted to talk about whether the length of time that it's taken for him to sign. Obviously he can't right now during the, the during lockout. the lockout. But the longer time goes on, does that mean that there's more of a chance that he signs in Houston, or do you think time is arbitrary at this point? Well, I, I said on the solo podcast I did last week, I think uh, John Heyman came out and said it's really between the Dodgers and the Astros at this point. And I know somebody mentioned in the chat that um, the Astros had discussions with Trevor Story before the lockout happened, and I do believe that happened. Um I really, really, really do don't see the Dodgers going out and signing Carlos Correa. That would be like the ultimate hypocritic move for them. Like you can't bash a player for cheating 
for all these years and for a couple well, of years and say, Oh yeah, you're a cheater. You're a cheater. You suck. And then say, Oh, come here, come here, baby. So, so in the, so in the Dodgers defense, they were able to bring into the fold, Kelly price and Mookie Betts, all from the Red Sox who beat them the year after we beat them. Of but course, they're not know. the Astros. The right. Astros they're were not. banging trash cans. And that's right. For that, so. And the, and the Red not, Sox not, were not, using not a guy. Against, in the, well, not against the, not against the uh, Dodgers in the World Series, but in, uh, in the regular but they, season. But they claim, but they claim. But yeah. apparently they they rooted out the problem in that in that in that scorekeeper guy in, in the clubhouse. And so can we just ban this guy for a little bit? No, he just ignore him, man. <laughs> just go on. People, people can't hear what's going on. Um, so bottom line is this. I think Correa is still gonna be open to the Astros if the market's not there. Correa's right. stuck on 10 years. I Especially really doubt. if the luxury t- tax threshold increases, and that's uh, we're, we're, that's going to be decided over the next month and a half, depending on what the owners and the players' association decides to uh, to agree on. And uh, so, this is something that the players want. They want more money. The owners, um, you know, Jim Crane is like, "I want more money. I want more money. I want to sign more players. Sign more players." So you know that this I is something. Well, I don't know if he wants more money to sign more players. I think he just wants more money. No, I'm joking. Well, no, no, you. I know you know you that he wants a bigger. Uh, and you know, uh, James Click. I know he's coming from the Tampa Bay Rays system, but you know, with especially after signing uh, Justin Verlander, he's like, "Oh crap! I backed myself into a wall, and I need to. I have all these built bars around me, and I mm. don't know what to do with them. He's like, I got all these great built bars." But I don't know what to do. I need more built bars, but I don't know how to afford them. So where can they go to get some more built bars? Man, you said built bars four times there. This holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, and even better, the candy bar. Built bar is filled with such holiday goodness, rich and decadent flavor, covered in chocolate. Even Alex would like it, I promise. Low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. Because it's a season of peace and love, um, make sure that when you bring built bars, you bring a variety so that nobody is fighting over who gets the best one. Well, basically, if you get a variety box, they're all the best one. Why? Because they're all the best flavors. I just recently got a mystery flavor box, and it's out of this world good. Like some of the marshmallowy treats they have that you want around the holidays, well, they have it. Get your hands on built bar puffs. They're light, fluffy, marshmallowy through and through. Different flavors, all covered in chocolate. Taste so good, you won't believe that they're filled with protein. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCK15. That's 15% off your order. LOCK15 um, at at um, built.com. All right. So talking about everybody wants to know about Carlos Cray. Uh, what does betonline.ag have to say about that? I don't know. You, you go ahead, Eric, since I can't do live reads. You go ahead and read it, Eric. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let me pull it up. It's okay. No, I got you. I got it, it, you. It's, it's I got you. Like, Better Thanks. Line has you covered all season. More props, odds, and lines better than ever as the football season continues to march towards the playoffs. The Texans, are they ever going to win again? Who knows? Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports life. action this season. Head to all our new updated desktop, our mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to receive your bonus. Will Brett be able to do a, a live read again? Uh, I'm sure betonline.ag will have the answer from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. And Bachelor, or Bachelorette, Brett's favorite. You can uh, oh, okay. who, yeah. who will get the ra- who will get the rose. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. That was like 67 seconds. Thank you. Anyways, a great job, Eric. That's nice. You know, um, be, since I do, you know, pretty much 90, I guess, 8.9% of the ads on this show, um, I thought you did pretty good coming from a pro. Um, so <laughs> I digress. But hey, um, one of the things talking about pros, okay, Jeremy Pena, Jose Siri are playing in the Dominican Winter League down there. And Jose Siri 
not batting super great, but still a flashy, fun player to watch. Um, and Jeremy Pena, what is going on with Jeremy Pena? Let me tell you something about Jeremy Pena, Eric. And I want to transition to some Dominican Winter League talk. Jeremy Pena right now has the highest UZR rating in the Dominican Winter League. What is UZR? I'm glad you ask. It's ultimate zone rating. And it's one of the most widely used, publicly available defensive stats. It puts a run value to defense, attempting to, to basically quantify how many runs a player saved or gave up through their fielding prowess, okay? So there are a, there are a couple different components to UZR, including Pena's UZR and then what the scale is, okay? So here's, here's the scale for UZR, Eric. If your UZR, and that's U-Z-R, if your UZR is 15 plus, that is gold glove caliber. If it's plus 10, it's great. If it's plus five, it's above average, zero average, and then it goes negative five below, negative 10 poor, negative 15 awful. His UZR is 6.977. So he goes between um, above average and great, but when they project out his UZR, his ultimate zone rating at 40 games for the season, his UZR jumps, Eric, from 6.977 to a 12.34, okay? So basically he goes from above average to great and goes from great to gold glove caliber. He is playing gold glove caliber baseball in the Dominican Winter League. Also, I, I actually have a UZR of, pl- of like 35, okay? So just throw that out there. He's also, Eric, hitting, um, he's hitting 297 with a slash line of 339, 406, 745, a fielding percentage of 970, and 14 double plays. This kid is a stud. Eric, let me ask you this about the Dominican League. Do you think it is good for these players, especially someone like Jeremy Pena, who missed time with a wrist injury, with not being able to play? Do you think it's huge for someone like Pena to be getting at-bats, even though it's not quote-unquote major league stuff? Uh, Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But, I mean, isn't isn't that awesome, though? Because if Correa is gone, okay, Jeremy Pena slots in there at shortstop, why do you need to go get a Trevor story? I mean, this kid's good. Uh, because uh, I just <laughs> stop. Come on. <laughs> no, no more UZR talk. That's um, okay. So I'll type it in for him. I have the definition. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I think that uh, what they'll probably do is they'll go out and get a uh, Simmons or somebody who is a veteran guy just to, as a um, a stand in somebody that's I mean unless they that somehow the luxury tax threshold goes kind of like Alex just did um, and just uh, cool. just kind of raises a little bit just um, kind of uh, lifts from the two ten right now to maybe two twenty or something like that where they can maybe afford um, like uh, Carlos Gray or something like that then I just don't see them going out and just spending a lot of money on Carlos Gray or, or maybe even on Trevor Story but um, We'll have to see what happens uh, in that situation. But I, I can see them go out and get Andrew Tim Simmons, a Jose Iglesias, somebody just as a stopgap uh, situation where it's not somebody who's a long term, but uh, he's somebody that they can just kind of say, OK, hey, this is your job for a little bit. If you keep it great but if if you uh, can't keep it jeremy pena is uh he's got a month in triple a and once he gets to a certain point uh the job's his but I, i've seen some people i mean i know it was ton in cheek that they said that they think he's more of a adam everett versus a carl's Correa. you know who i'm talking about on mm-hmm. twitter it's your uh, some guy that you argue with a lot on twitter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's good. It's all good, man. What's up? So, yeah, so so we'll have to see what happens with this. But that's a that's the bad thing about the lockout is we don't there's we don't know what's going on. Like there's just whole like Whoa. month and a half where we just have no clue what's going on, and all we have to do is speculate about what's going to happen. So okay, someone someone said don't don't compare don't compare Trevor's story to Pena. Okay, Trevor Story's highest UZR was in 2019 at 10.3. Last year he was 3.1. 3. 
and in 2020, he was 5.3. So his UZR has dipped and suffered sub 10 where he's good or average. So if we're talking about UZR rating, all I have to go off is the numbers that I have to go off. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's better than a proven, talented, all-star caliber type player in Trevor's story. But I think a lot of people are sleeping on, on, on Pena. And obviously, he hasn't had the reps. So this is all speculative, right? But I can go yeah. back and I can look at story. I can see where he's been and I can see what he's done. But I can also see how he's regressed. Will he? Will that change? It becomes a Minute Maid Park. It very well could. Will his batting average go up? Will his fielding go up? Surrounded by Bregman and Altuve, those are all things that we don't know. So everything from this point on is called it's called projectability. How much projectability does a player have? Projectability um, UZR is at thirty two for who? For Trevor Story? Uh, no, they're doing your counting. Like how many times you've said that word? Oh no, hey, that's okay. Um, Ultimate zone rating. How's that? Um, anyways, you know, I just want to say it. this. What's that? Uh, for the visual people, uh, this is Trevor Story. He's done this at the big league level. Okay. Here's uh, Jeremy Pena. He's done it at the minor league level. So Eric until told one baseball high and one baseball lower. Yeah. So uh, until Jeremy Pena has done it at the big league level, we really can't compare what the two have done. So um, story um, um, story has done it at the big league level. Yes, he's had a poor year. He's coming off mm-hmm. one of his worst seasons, but it's also off a year where the team sucked. He was supposed to be traded, but he was not. There was a lot of things that went into the 2021 season that was out of his control. So I'm not looking at the 2021 season, but that is an advantage for any team that's trying to sign him because they can say, look, dude, you're coming off a bad season. So that's why he has not been signed at this point because teams don't know what to expect from him. I'm just saying, Jeremy Pena, he's got a good bat. He missed most of the 2021 season in Triple A. We don't know what to expect from him. So he could be Adam Everett. He could be Tim Bogar. He could oh, be. Oh, come on, dude. No, he did <laughs> Tim Bogar. Eric, Eric. Eric the Man Heisman. I just use your middle name. Let me Tim Bogar. Okay. Now, now you're just trying to appease the masses. No, <laughs> don't don't sugarcoat Jeremy Pena. This kid's a stud. He's an absolute he is not Tim Bogar. Come on. I'm just saying we don't know what this kid could be. We well, he's AJ, definitely better than Tim Bogar. I can okay, promise AJ you. AJ Reed I'll was my supposed to be the next best thing. And look Dude. at where AJ Reed was supposed to be the next best thing. And I wouldn't even talk about how that got we'll talk about how that got messed up off air. Cause that could get me in trouble. But um, anyways, um, yeah, AJ Reed, a, that was from outside sources. Anyways, um, here's the deal. He, here's the deal. Um, the, the Astros have kind of this, kind of this like beautiful mess at shortstop. If, if Correa does not sign with the Astros, okay. Um, which everybody really wants him to sign. There is a plethora of, there is a ton of choices. And the Astros have to decide, do they want to go budget in defense and sacrifice and have another dead bat? Or do they want to go out and get someone who has the potential to have a good bat? Or do they just want to wait around? Do they think Payne will have the stuff to come in after June 10th when he can come in after that date, kind of like um, kind of like Alvarez had and have an impact on this team? I think if Jeremy Payne starts AAA off hot with the bat, Eric, I think he easily could slot in there at shortstop. But yeah. he does need extra ABs, and that's why I think the Dominican actually helped him right. um, get those extra help ABs. Anybody. Yeah, I mean, he'll help anybody. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Josh Reddick is apparently back, coming back home. So apparently, he is, yeah. he's done with his um, his stint. And uh, was he playing Dominican? Yeah, yeah. They were they were all down there. Um, I believe I believe the season's wrapped up. Um, okay. It's you know coming really close to to you know to being finalized. So okay. All right, so guys, uh, that's all we got for this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Uh, you got one more thing? Oh no, okay. We've done, we've done. That's right. You, you did an, you did an ad read. Excellent attempt there, Eric. Thank you um, for the bet online ad. I thought we had missed it, but you did it because I was, I was used to doing the bet online ad. Okay, and all right. I'm you, like, you did it. Good job. My bad. All right. Um, no, that's it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm golden.
<laughs> all righty guys so uh, go and join us uh, tomorrow for another edition of the lockdown astros podcast we'll be go ahead and uh, talking about um uh, something else I, I think you've got um something planned uh, you sent me something else about uh you sent me a list of players and uh, yes we'll we're gonna yeah yeah we're gonna talk about like um players just just all time like all time astros team um like what player best fits in each position okay. and um if, if I can prepare my stuff before I'm actually going to be writing an article for a website coming up soon, and that news will be breaking this week. Um, but I've got my own, I've got my own new baseball metric that I've come up with, and I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I got to keep it close to the vest. Uh, if you DM me, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm not I'm kidding. I'm nobody knows. It's ironclad. You are you told me, by the way, but yeah, oh, anyway, I know you did. That's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astro Podcast. Make sure you tune in for another edition. Make sure you subscribe to us and make us your first listen every day on YouTube, on Apple, Odyssey, wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you make the Lockdown Astros Podcast your first listen and Ghost Rose, and let's end this lockout and go. <laughs>